The eruption that began on the 19th of March 2021 lasted for many months and thousands of people visited it from across the globe, as well as many Icelanders, of course. If you visited the volcano, you saw people toasting hot dogs and marshmallows, singing bonfire songs. People recorded music videos there and they even got married. In Iceland, it became almost like a family friend. But the eruption also changed over the course of its lifetime many times. And it, at some point, was a cause for concern in terms of infrastructure and even threat to life. Welcome back to The Volcano, A Memoir. My name is Josiane Gatins from Reykjavik Grapevine. And today we're looking at the lifespan of the volcano. In our previous episode, we discussed how the volcano actually started and your experience of visiting it for the first time. Mm. But then you kind of got into like a routine. Yeah. It was part of your daily <laughs> life. Can you tell us about how that, how that felt? First of all... Wake up, brush teeth, visit volcano. Yeah. Like... <laughs> <laughs> it was tense, to <laughs> say, the, say the least. Perhaps you could probably see it like from the first video. I think I, I, I dropped like uh, f like 10 or 15 kilos actually. We got into like a very good shape, uh, physical shape, me and Art, uh, because hiking is, is, takes a toll, of course. Uh, we decided to go there uh, basically in every like uh, newscast that we could. Okay. Uh, not because it was easy, but it, because we were kind of just addicted to this. Mm -hmm. We felt like uh, it's like it's you know, almost hard to like uh, explain, but I think many people understand actually how you get like energy from the nature, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like you can feel it when you go into the to the wilderness. It's exactly the same with these uh, with, with with the eruption, and, and and it was the weirdest thing. We, at least for me, I felt like it was like. I don't know, I felt connected somehow and like connected to like everything within me, like the, the bloodstream and anything, everything. And I, I felt good every time we, we, I came there. So uh, we decided to hike every day, at least at it, it first, like the hike was not that easy. It was four hours, two hours there, two yeah. hours back. Mm -hmm. And then of course we hike all around the area. So we were hiking from like uh, 10 to even 15 kilometers. Uh, at least twice a week, we came there, uh, and this little uh, bush, like uh, the geologists called the, called the eruption, they said like this is not going to survive for more than like uh, perhaps days, perhaps the week. Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. if if it really has some 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 toughness in it, mm -hmm. it might be two weeks. Okay, which is actually not that uh, off when it comes to these uh, eruptions. For example, Eyjafjallajökull, like, good. It had like uh, around two months within it. Yeah. It's like uh, mean that like it, it just it all goes into these chambers, the, the energy, and it spews out, and just the chamber goes down and down and down. But uh, little did they know, <laughs> this was no ordinary woos, if you want. Uh, so we were there always, uh, and this, we of course saw that more and more tourists were coming. Uh, not only tourists, but Icelanders as well. Yes. Uh, we knew at this time we were always with the gas masks on us. We, we knew. We also just felt that the gas, like the danger from the gas, was not as much as we thought. Yes. Uh, we had no scientific reason to think this. We just felt it, uh, and we never said it. Like in, in, I think it was quite late when I actually said it in the newscast that, mm -hmm. that like, like, don't worry that much about the gas. Just watch out where the wind is. But I actually, I, there was like one moment where I was in the wind itself, like and got the, the smoke at me, and you can just feel it, like it was like burning your eyes and yes. uh, and so on. But uh, nobody got sick. We were not like uh, nauseous or anything mm -hmm, like that. Mm -hmm. And there were few cases like that. But for the numbers of people that visited the, the area, they were like like strikingly few. Yeah, it was remarkable considering just the, the like exactly as you say, the concentration of, of people who were going there, the fact that it was rough terrain, mm -hmm. the fact that it was still winter when yeah. this was happening, actually relatively few accidents. Yeah, right. um, and of course we need to mention the fact that you know part of that safety was the fact that the search and rescue teams were always there, always yeah. present with uh, gas monitors, yeah. keeping were, an eye on the situation. They were amazing. They were so amazing that, but also they were like uh, a little bit uh, 
uh, we we were sometimes annoyed by them, but uh, it, it was it was all fine. <laughs> we were just like sometimes we, we want, to, for example, the night we couldn't be there overnight. Uh, like, of course, for a simple reason, it's dangerous. We were not asking like we want to sleep there, but often like uh, we were still like trying to get like the the light right uh, yes. or the darkness and and see just seeing the volcano uh, was. Uh, in the night was in itself absolutely incredible. Yeah, I mean, it's the whole thing, I think the reason why uh, you, people wanted to visit multiple times, obviously beyond reporting on it, was that this was, very quickly it was apparent that this was an area that was changing very rapidly. The volcano yeah. was changing very rapidly, but also even just seeing it at different times of the day mm -hmm. was a completely different experience. Yeah. Um, and yeah, early early on, the search and rescue team were, were clearing the area at night, mm -hmm partially so that they could have a reduced number of people there and, yeah. and go and rest, which is totally legitimate. Yes, um, exactly. Yeah. Uh, understandable, all of this. Uh, <laughs> but it was just like uh, our needs were not always uh, in aligned with their needs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Simple as that. Uh, but the thing is, of course, <clears throat> um, we were there like uh, every day and this, uh, we, we also felt like this was taking its own life uh, online. Uh, hey there, uh, welcome to Reykjavik Greipas newscast. Uh, welcome to Reykjavik Greipas newscast. My name is Valu Grattesson, I'm an editor-in-chief at Reykjavik Greipas. Welcome to Reykjavik Greipas newscast. Are you recording? Welcome, 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 hello there, welcome, uh, welcome, hello. I'm Alina from the Reykjavik Grape Wine. My name is Valo Grattison. My name is Valo Grattison. My name is Valo Grattison. Valo Grattison. Uh, hello and welcome to Reykjavik Grape Wine's newscast, the volcano cast. We are here at, uh, of course, the volcano that everybody's talking about. Uh, welcome to Reykjavik Grape Wine's newscast. Hi there. Polly, got it? Yo. I got Polly here with me, as you can see. Welcome to Reykjavik Greipas newscast. My name is Valur Grattison and I'm an editor-in-chief at Reykjavik Greipas. No, we are not at the volcano. Uh, sorry about that. You were saying in, in previous episodes that, you know, the, the, even before the actual eruption happened, numbers were starting to rise and mm. you were getting more uh, traffic to the YouTube. But you've essentially gone from being a reporter in a very small country talking about Icelandic specific news in English mm -hmm. Now you're having like thousands and thousands of views yeah. and people are, you know, interacting with you yeah. and know your name. Like, how, right. what was that like? That it was almost kind of overnight. Yeah, that was, of course, quite funny. Uh, it was like, uh, I mean, I've been in media in Iceland for so, for so long time. I've never experienced so much attention about anything that I've done ever before. Mm -hmm. People were stopping me like just when I was going to the office in the morning. I was stopped like two or three times by different uh, like the travelers or tourists mm -hmm. or, or even experts living in Iceland and, and so on. And it was incredible and, and, and yeah, it was, it was just odd. I don't know, just, I, w I wouldn't say it was fame. I mean, I, 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 I feel like a reporter, you know, it's like, like how, how famous can you be as a reporter? You're just telling other people's stories or reporting from something remarkable. Mm -hmm. So I, I did not uh, experience it like I was famous in any way. And, and does not, don't do it today. The only one that is famous actually, and rightly so, is Polly actually. Yes, that is true, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, and there's different ways of dealing with, with fame, obviously. Uh, <laughs> you know, she's massive ego, impossible yes. to handle. She's you know, very hard, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you're, you know, you're, you're visiting very regularly, like at least twice a week. Uh, you're watching this this volcano change, and you're also seeing, you know, there's more and more people coming. Like, what are your yeah. interactions like around the volcano? Because so yeah, me and us were we were very uh, focused on what we were doing. Uh, we were also just like reserving energy often, like mm -hmm. just trying to go somewhere and just uh, get out, I'll get get whatever news there is out, uh, mm -hmm. and so on. But there were like, of course, thousands of people often, and it was beautiful, like in the evenings. Uh, and we saw like all of, everybody had like headlights in, in the hills, and it was like a rock concert. Yeah. And the rock star in the middle was basically just spewing lava, fire, and so on. 
and it was uh, just breathtaking in, in so many ways. It was incredible. There was like, the, the, it totally did feel like a concert, and it was yeah. like, you know, people were kind of ooing and eyeing, and there was like this crowd <laughs> mentality. And part of the reason I, you know, I think we forget as well now as, as restrictions are, are loosening, but at that point, nobody had gathered in a crowd yeah, right. for such a long time. Yeah. Um, you know, at this point as well, there were paths there. Yeah. It was still a, a rough hike, yeah. but like people were helping each other up and down yeah. the steep parts. They were shining their torches for each other when it yeah. was dark. And then they're all, you know, spaced out in the hill, like still distant, still outside, but like having this collective experience yeah. for the first time. That's a very good point, actually. Uh, I forgot about that. Like, of course, we were outside. It was as, uh, like, I mean, even when our epidemiologist was asked, like, uh, how about the virus, uh, in, in, like, mm -hmm. in that area, he was, also, he was always, like, wear a mask and so on. He said, like, but still you're outside and yeah. there is wind and, and you're obviously not uh, in that much danger mm -hmm, if, you, mm -hmm, if you don't. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, it was like, uh, it was literally like being in concert that was legal at the same time. Yes. And we had nothing else to do. No. Like, what, what, what are you going to do? Go to the cinema? It's, it's closed. <laughs> I mean... But yeah, it's like uh, that moment was magical in many ways. We saw people like uh, in volleyball, like playing, yeah. playing, and people were like uh, cooking food on this, which I cannot imagine was good, to be honest. It was so bad, uh, yeah. ta like smell of the sulfur that was like in, in, the, in, the, in the lava itself. Did not taste good. Yeah, did, right? Did, did you, did you I, tried, I, did, I did a marshmallow and it was like, oh, this is <laughs> yeah, mm, not tasty. Always yeah. when I saw it, like, nice move, but it's, right. it's going to taste horrible. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, but it got, I mean, it, um, people got married. Yeah, right. People got married, people cooked food, yeah. people... People were had food. concerts. Yes. Like, and people had, like, like fashion shoots there. Yeah, and, yep, yep, and, yep. And, uh, and eventually they did also start, uh, you know, re relaxed in terms of uh, people staying overnight. Yeah. And, uh, and, and you know, the, some people... You're one of those idiots, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> some, people, some people camped. Um, and by this point, this was at the stage uh, where this kind of single cone that originally you could get very close to yeah. had, had changed. Yeah. Uh, and there was this kind of, at that point, there was this, like... Uh, lava lake yeah. basically at this point um and there was still there was still one cone but you know it was you were kind of quite far away from it but this was like even that stage didn't last very long no. things started to move quite quickly in terms of the, yeah. the actual yeah. volcano this is this is the moment that the volcano started to surprise everyone uh, this was one of the like Everyone thought that this was the life of this volcano. One one crater, mm -hmm. like it was, it was kind of split in two, like uh, or in half at some time, but it was still the same crater in, in many ways. Yeah. Uh, but all of a sudden, like uh, the geologists started to, and the rescue team said, like you cannot be like in certain areas because they said like they, it was like a huge line, it was like five kilometers long. I said like uh, it's probably going to go up uh, somewhere else on this in this line. And so it did. Yeah. Um, and it was quite amazing when this happened. And to be honest, we, 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 like that, that's the moment we, we realized that this was not your, your regular Icelandic uh, volcano. Mm -hmm. This was a completely different kind of animal that we have seen before. Yeah, and this is where people, I would say as well, it changed, you know, there was obviously this all uh, this anticipation where it was going to go off and what that would mean. And then there was almost like a relief when it did go off. It was in this like perfect spot yeah. where this valley was going to fill up and it was nobody was expecting it to yeah. go on for particularly long. Exactly. And then suddenly when these fissures opened and it started to go on a lot longer, th that tension began to rise again. The right. concern started to grow. Because, uh, well, I mean, of course, uh, like statistically, like... It would take like this volcano like 50 years to destroy something important, but in these 50 years they would destroy two towns mm -hmm. like with 15,000 people each, uh, five to 15,000. So it was like uh, uh, like if anything would change more rapidly, if it would surprise us even more, there was some real ta like danger going mm -hmm. on here, and of course. Uh, this meant that uh, like the math office was like also like the <laughs> the, the volcanologists they were like this is just a wuss. They were like hmm okay this is perhaps a little bit more complicated than I thought. 
so what happened basically, we, we went there, uh, we checked this out, and all of a sudden there were three craters instead of uh, basically one. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have to say, like, this was the most, like, wild moment I've ever seen. It, like, when it comes to all of this, we could go get so close to this, the heat was so much, and, like, it was like a theme park almost. Yeah. It was like a huge, uh, like our good old, like number one was there just bubbling away somehow. Yeah. And it was like, it was, it was like, there was like nothing around, like there's a flat earth. And then all of a sudden, like huge, like a bowl somehow. Uh, and that was like just bubbling away. And then that one started to fill uh, Meradalir yes. uh, with, with lava. And that was like the first moment that started to happen. And I remember I, we looked down to this Meradalir and it was, it was literally like just a huge like, like a desert, basically. Yeah. It was so big that I was like, okay, nothing to worry about here. <laughs> <laughs> but like I said, little did we know because it, it literally filled that valley like in a, in a very rapid time. And it was, uh, and yeah, basically what we were seeing there is that the volcano was changing, more fish, like fishes were coming, and slowly it went from like three to four, mm -hmm. all of a sudden there were five, all of a sudden one of them just went off completely. Yeah. Uh, and, and then we had eight uh, in like, at, like when they were, the, most of them were going on. And that was like, like we went there in, in the night. Mm -hmm. That was the craziest time I was, was there. I, I, it was like when I visited the, the area, I think. And uh, it was beautiful, like when the number two, I think, uh, called it. It was mm -hmm. like, uh, uh, they came like a huge, like very quickly, actually. And like, when I talk about quickly in lava, it's like, it, it goes pretty slow, but it, it eats a lot of area mm -hmm. in, in a very short amount of time. Yes. Uh, so, and it was eating up the snow and it was just, it was, it was like just insane. I've never seen anything as beautiful hunting weird <laughs> and just crazy at the same time you know totally surreal yeah um and obviously you know there's then this kind of response to this as well as this kind of concern grows and the re people start to realize this unpredictability so you know so far along in the in the lifetime of the volcano people start to dig trenches yes <laughs> i mean yeah, uh, there was there were two things. Uh, there was this uh, experimental kind of uh, like uh, you know cable for internet that was buried there, uh, and it was there before, and uh, it was just bad luck that it was there basically. <laughs> uh, but it was a uh, it wasn't vital for anything, but it was it was definitely not good if we went off. They wanted to see basically what happened when the lava goes over that. Mm -hmm. uh, this was not huge, but th this was infrastructure. So I, I kind of I was like, fine, I'll just tell that news. Infrastructure, some <laughs> cable nobody use, uh, is onto the lava and it's still running. It's weird, right? Uh, and then the next story, of course, was about the road. Suderstrandar mm -hmm. uh, or the South Beach Road. Uh, it was funny actually, I saw often in a comment, people like, like just did often not get that how insignificant that road was. Oh yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nobody used that road. Uh, everybody was like, how about just building like a bridge or something over it? Like, how about just not, and just <laughs> wait and just until the volcano goes off and then just do the road again, yeah. you know? Um, but yeah, I mean, it was kind of, there was this, a, a bit of a panic around this and some yeah. incredibly hilarious photos of tiny diggers b <laughs> building trenches as, you know, with this volcano behind them, just yeah. like, how do you think this is going to go? Yeah, there was, a, there was like this uh, engineers, mm -hmm. uh, they, they were, uh, they, they started to basically do the maths, like how can we stop this? And they did a lot of tests there. And in the end, after a few failed uh, like, uh, you know, operations, they managed actually to, to do this pretty well. And it held into, until the end, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the, these were pretty like, massive uh, constructions, like if you were there. I mean, it was very small if you looked at like, the area itself. Uh, but it, it worked, yeah, sure. Uh, and uh, but, the, but the thing is also like what we were always the most concerned about is that it would it, the lava would go f overflow from like where it started mm -hmm. uh, and go like uh, into the lava in in, in Nautheim, 
uh, like an octar creek, sorry, it's mm -hmm. like a different kind of a place. Uh, and then they would, like, there was nothing to stop it until yes. basically just Grindavik, yes. the town. Yes. Um, but, you know, luckily it, it stayed manageable. Yeah, that's the other thing, of course. I mean, the, the, the lava there was, uh, it was always the same volume. So I don't even remember what the, the In terms of the, the flow? Yeah, the flow, okay. flow the 5 yes. to 15 or okay. something. It was out, something like that. It was always the same, and it was so little, actually. It mm -hmm. was like, we, we were comparing it to other volcanoes, and it was just, uh, it, it was nothing. It was ridiculous how small it was compared to other volcanoes in Iceland, which was mostly often uh, like in the in the highlands. Yeah. And therefore, nobody noticed because yeah. there's like endless of like... Just felt, yeah. yeah, it takes you just hours to just to drive through it before. Like, well, nobody even, like noticed, like, hmm, lava then now, okay. Like, but, I mean, there's so many things about you know, the fact that this had like the, the small flow and it didn't end up endangering much infrastructure or yeah. property or, or whatever. But there were other things that made this like the perfect tourist volcano. I mean, yeah. ultimately, it, it was it was uh, very close to the capital without actually endangering anyone there. <laughs> yeah. You could see it from Reykjavik yeah. uh, quite frequently. Yeah. And mm -hmm. part of the reason you could is because at some point, the volcano got bored of just kind of flowing a little bit smoothly and started to shoot up into the air. And that's the thing. That was the moment that like changed everything for me, at least. And that's like once again the like it had gone from like being with what was it like uh, eight craters, all smaller ones, mm -hmm. even the, like this very tiny one. It was like it was almost like a like it was just like bubbling like it was like I don't know. It's like like a child like giving a tongue or <laughs> like, something like this. <laughs> it was absolutely ridiculous. And we were like, is, is this a volcano or is this something Come else? Come on, try harder. Uh, yeah, but there is fire there. Anyways, uh, so all of a sudden, uh, the, they were all going down, all of these, uh, these craters, on, uh, except one was left. And uh, me and Ars, we were always talking about like we need to like document the the, the hiking route here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We were we were always a little bit stressed because of the hiking elements, because uh, yeah, hiking there was as you felt yourself, it was harder than you thought, and it was always the case. Everybody that went there, they were like, this is much harder than I thought. Yeah. Like yes, that's that's hiking. It's it's hard. Uh, so we we wanted just to make a specific video about it. Just tips and tricks, like this is a uh, hard like, hill to go up, mm -hmm. how to uh, dress and so on. Yeah, a lot and of people turning up in trainers yes. and t-shirts and we, having a difficult time. Yeah, which was actually doable. If you, if you were like, like 20 years old, you could just run up there and back <laughs> down, you know. But uh, you didn't want to be there for long like, like yeah. that. Uh, so the thing is that uh, we started doing this, me and Ast. And uh, I was like, and we saw like, it was like a beautiful day, by the way. And uh, we just saw this black smoke and then nothing. And we were like, what is this? Like, we didn't, didn't even realize what this was somehow. And we came up there and, uh, and we saw that the, the crater, uh, it was basically off. So I was like doing some uh, stamped up for uh, like about, the, about this. I was like, yeah, it's probably off. And like, who knows, perhaps it won't go back on. And then all of a sudden, I heard like a, it was like a propeller, like a like a like a like a jet propeller, wow. like 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 this somehow. Uh, and I was like just looked b b back uh, and, and I saw something. And all of a sudden, I just saw it bubbling and then just shooting up like a geyser, yeah, like yeah. A, uh, like an Icelandic geyser. We were like just stood there. We were like I just looked at us. They were like. What the hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> this is not the volcano that we saw the last time. Yeah, this is not the pathetic volcano that everyone was. <laughs> wow, I have not seen this before. <laughs> but it was truly spectacular. I mean, and and being able to see it at night as well, and yeah, yeah from from Reykjavik. I mean, it was just. Yeah, and it was so high, uh, it was shot, so, shot up so high, I, I think it was two or three hundred meters it was going up. And therefore, like when it was in the city, that, because before that, you could just see the glow. Mm -hmm. But at this time, you could see the, the fire just go up. Yeah. And it was, uh, it was so high, it was so, I wouldn't say violent, it was just, it was, uh, the pulse in it was so unique also. 
It was like yeah. always a few minutes like between it, mm -hmm. uh, and it just it, it, it spewed like a crazy volcano, and then it went back, and it always had like the last spew, like 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 a explosion or something, and it was every time it did the same thing, and it was just incredible to see it, and yeah, that was basically the moment we started to just. Like that was the Instagram uh, moment. It was like the selfie moment with a yeah. volcano. Like, holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> um, and then, of course, you know, it's it's this is changing over time. The roots change. Some yeah. of them lava was over them, and you know, the whole landscape changed dramatically. Mm -hmm. um, and and as it's kind of going on, people are starting to wonder, like, how long is this actually going to last? And like, there's. Mm -hmm there was quite varying estimates, right, about yeah. how this might, people were saying maybe another month, people were saying maybe years. Yeah, this is the time, like, because it went off 19th of March, uh, the, and this fire guys were, were two months later, mm -hmm. so the, the, they were, the, that volcano was officially longer, uh, had longer lifespan than Eyjafjallajökull. Yes. That was much more uh, brutal. Uh, so, yeah, we were like, once again, like nobody knew what this was, and historically, they were uh, like we knew that volcanoes in this area have been going on for two hundred years. So it's like two hundred years. Yeah, that that will do a lot of damage, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> you were to do that hike every every week for two hundred years. <laughs> <laughs> I would try if I could, but the thing, of course, like exactly, was the the, the landscape was uh, was changing so rapidly. It was flowing over the street, over the hiking paths that we used to go. It was changing the routes that, like the really comfortable ones, mm -hmm. uh, they were not available anymore. So we had to go like the really bad ones, and then we had the gas. It was always like, uh, like how how is the wind today? Yes. Uh, it's, it's straight in our face, so we have to go like the other route. That's like it's a really bad route, and so on. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, like. All good things, the volcano did have to end, and ultimately uh, it did, and it finished uh, a few months later. And we're going to talk about how that happened and take you to the volcano in our next episode. <laughs>